Hello, I'm Darren O. Welcome to the live Sabbath worship service for Lakeland and Platte City Churches. It's July 4th, 2020. Pastor Mark is taking the day off and Elder Tom Glass is leading our worship service today. I hope everyone is staying safe. Um, even though the number of new COVID-19 cases is still rising, we have a plan to reopen our churches as safely as we can. Tom is going to tell you all about it. So go ahead, Tom. Thank you, Darren. Thanks for um, hosting our service today. Happy 4th of July, Independence Day uh, for everybody. While my sermon today is um, on heaven, there's no place on earth I'd rather live than in the United States. So Carol and I both have on uh, our red, white, and blue uh, for the 4th of July. Uh, next week, our church will be open uh, July the 11th. Um, we'll have live interaction uh, at our church. We will continue to uh, broadcast with Zoom so that you'll have the ability to um, stay home if you prefer to do that with the rise in cases, uh, even in Polk County. Um, while we open, uh, we have outlined many different things to, um, to do to keep you and us safe. Uh, to begin with, um, everybody is going to be required to wear a mask. So bring a mask with you uh, when you come to church next week. Uh, if you don't have one, we will supply them. But obviously our supply is limited and we would like you to have you bring your own mask. Um, we will be checking temperatures. Uh, no, one, no one will be admitted with a temperature over 100.5. And uh, that's according to CDC guidelines. Uh, we're also asking for reservations because uh, our church will take anywhere from 60 to 105 people with social distancing. And that number is unknown because if there's only one person uh, and then six feet between them and one person, uh, we can only get like three people in a row. Uh, if there's a family of four or five, obviously you can get more in a row. So um, we don't know how many people uh, will be able to get in. So we ask you to make a reservation to come. Um, and we're gonna take temperatures while you're in the car. So drive ahead um, and I will be taking the temperatures. So um, drive ahead, let me take everybody's temperature in the car to make sure that um, you're safe uh, and don't have uh, an infection that you don't know about. Um, and we'll, and we'll have social distancing throughout in Lakeland. Now, for those of you who may be watching from Plant City, uh, Plant City will be meeting outside to the, in that grassy area under the tree on the right side of the entrance to the uh, sanctuary as you're headed into the sanctuary. The meeting there will be at 9.30. It'll be from 9.30 to 10.30. Um, and there is gonna be a, baptize, a baptism uh, next Sabbath also. So that'll be a brief interlude inside the building. But other than that, the service will be outside 9.30 to 10.30 next Sabbath. Um, stay tuned for that. Um, I don't think we have any more announcements, do we, Darren? Uh, no, we don't. Uh, um, we have a few um, people who are joining us. Um, Eric and Helen Jensen are watching. They say happy Sabbath. Daniel Basham says happy Sabbath to all. Thank you. And um, we're um, at this time. We're we're going to have a, a special music from uh, uh, called uh, Heavenly Medley. Do you want to tell us anything about it, Tom? Before I play it, um, this is the gift of grace. Um, we recorded this at East Pastor Church uh, about a month ago now, um, and they're playing it, I believe today also. So um, this is just something we did uh, spur of the moment. We hadn't practiced for four months prior to doing it. So um, this is a little impromptu, but it's best we could do without ever practicing. Okay. All right. And uh, Laura Irvin and Enid Ford also 
have joined us and say happy Sabbath. So happy Sabbath to you too. All right, so now we'll hear Gift of Grace. <laughs> So if you have your Bibles, please turn there with me, please. And it's Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. That's Revelation 21, verses 1 through 4. <clears throat> and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. 
And I heard a great voice of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither there sh shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. May God add his blessing to those precious words. Can we bow our heads for prayer, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with so grateful hearts this morning, thanking you for preparing us a place so that we can spend eternity with you. Father, for there is no greater gift than the sacrifice of your son in order to secure our place with you. We love you so much, and we just praise your name today, Lord. Thank you for this Sabbath day. Thank you for the opportunity to connect with Zoom and just touch the hearts of the people that are listening, Lord. Touch Tom's heart as he um, speaks words from you. And Father, we just lift up our country today. Lord, there's so much disunity, and we just humble ourselves before you and asking you to heal our land heal our land, Father, physically, and also the people that are suffering from this COVID-19. Father, just touch them. Father, stop the spread and help us to be diligent, too, in, in doing what we can, Father. Father, I lift up those that are hurting today, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, Thank you that you can supply all of our needs and you've invited us to cast our burdens on you. So we do that this morning, placing them in your hands and we just stand amazed at what you're going to do. We lift up you today, Lord, be glorified in our lives and we give you our praise in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. I was surprised to see the... Uh, cameras freeze on as they use alternate cameras on that video. Um, it, uh, we obviously didn't quit singing, so that's good at least. Um, uh, my uh, topic today is design for heaven. Uh, there was a Baptist preacher that uh, saw a boy and said, son, would you like to go to heaven? The boy shifted from foot to foot, back and forth. Well, or, uh, and the preacher said, what's the matter, son? Don't you want to go to heaven when you die? And the boy said, oh, when you die, I thought you were preparing a load right now. Um, people um, everywhere want to go to heaven. They just don't want to go right now. Um, heaven sounds like a good place if you're sick. It gets uh, greater and greater as we get older and older, and it's an absolute must when we die. Uh, youth want to see Jesus come, but they want to get married and have some fun before then, so just delay a little bit longer. Many of you know may, may know Richard Opal. Um, he's uh, in, an evangelist. He's been a preacher uh, for a number of years, he's been a missionary in Southern Asia and in South America. Um, he's been to the Lakeland Church and presented a uh, series of meetings at one time, and he's preached a couple of times uh, in our church since then. But uh, he, I've always enjoyed Richard's sermons. I, they're extremely interesting. He's down to earth. Uh, he has a wealth of knowledge being in foreign countries for many years. Um, but most of all, I think I enjoy him because he's my friend. Um, his father, Dan Ophel, was our um, pastor in our church when Richard and I were pre-teens. Um, so we go back many, many years. Um, the Dan Ophel family lived in Ashtabilla, Ohio, in the city, and Richard preferred the country. Uh, we lived in the country, and and quite often on Sabbath, uh, Richard would come home with us. Uh, there was a dirt road that ran down the, uh, beside our property. And uh, 
we would go down about a half a mile to an old covered bridge. And by the way, that covered bridge is still there, uh, preserved by the Historical Society of Ohio. And we would stand on in the bridge uh, because it was a one lane bridge and we'd stand uh, in the bridge and feel the rumble and, and hear the uh, rumble as cars would go through or we would go underneath the bridge and watch the timbers give as the cars uh, uh, went through. In the summer, we were attracted to water to the river below the um, bridge. And it was always Sabbath when he came and we knew we couldn't swim. Um, that was taboo, but uh, we would roll up our pant legs just as high as we could get them and go in right up to the point of getting them wet because we didn't want that tell telltale evidence that we'd been in the river. Um, but then often we would sit on the banks of the river with our feet uh, in the water and we would talk. One day I remember distinctly one conversation that we had uh, as if it were yesterday. Richard said, you know, uh, Noah preached for 120 years and then God came and destroyed the wicked and uh, sent the flood. And I wonder if the Adventist church will preach the three angels messages for 120 years and then Jesus will come and destroy the wicked and the earth with fire. Well, I pondered that for a moment and thought, Let's see, the church started in 1844. If Jesus came in 120 years, that would be 1964, I would be 23 years old. By then I would have a chance to maybe go over Fool's Hill, maybe uh, get married, possibly even have children by then and be back in church. That's good, I can deal with that. Uh, 1964 uh, would be a good time for Jesus to come. Uh, we discussed what it would be like to live in a sin, sinless world. There are basically two chapters in the Bible that talk about a sinless world. The first and second chapters of Genesis, uh, before sin entered the world, and the second, I mean, the last uh, 21 and 22 of Revelation that talks about the world after sin has been destroyed. Um, the rest of the scripture seems to be a tragic interlude with sin. Um, the truth is, heaven is, uh, Satan has is, is made us believe that we'll be uncomfortable in heaven, but the truth is, that's the only place we will absolutely feel at home. Uh, I was a uh, diver, and as I prepared for diving, I went and bought uh, all the equipment, the tank, the regulator, the BCD, the weights, and I told them I want the best fins that I can get because I really want to swim fast uh, when I'm diving. Well, when I went down, I discovered that even with the best fins made, I was slower th than any fish or sea turtle. I would uh, be swimming as fast as I could and the sea paddles would, and sea turtles would pass me like I was dragging an anchor. Um, I think the last time I went on a dive was with Carol's oldest daughter in the Bahamas. Um, and we were the first to go in uh, and jumped off of the dive boat, went down and there were shark everywhere. Um, the dive master went down after we did, and he tried to count them. They were circling, uh, not particularly around us. They were just swimming leisurely. Um, and they were going together, maybe as far as we could see out, uh, about maybe a quarter to half a mile. And then they would circle maybe a quarter of a mile uh, behind us. So they were running three quarters of a mile to a mile. Um, and just circling us. And as fast as we could swim, they kept circling us. Uh, talk about running circles around you. But if you take any of those sea creatures out of the sea and put them on the earth, they will flop around without grace. Um, and 
and not be able to uh, move at all uh, or very rapidly at any rate. If any of you have seen a sea turtle on land, you know that it's a laborious um, prospect for him to get up, for her to get up to lay eggs and, and to get back to the sea again. Um, and so it is with us. We can function partially in a, a world of sin but we'll only function fully when we get to the uh, heavenly place where we are designed to be. Um, I have listed five examples of how we are designed to be in heaven. Uh, number one, we are designed for life. We hate death. Why are there so many jokes about the perfectly respectable uh, profession of being an undertaker? One of my best friends in when I went to Forest Lake Academy, I met him my sophomore year, and he told me I'm going to be an undertaker when I grow up. Um, he, we were best friends and talked often, and he often talked about uh, being an undertaker. Uh, he quipped that he was going to have his own funeral home, and his motto would be, you stab him, we slab him. Um, Dan did go on to become an undertaker. Um, he did it for about 20 years. And then one day he told me, Tom, I can't stand this anymore. First, I got to tell you that Dan was meticulous about his personal uh, dress and everything. Never saw him with a hair out of place or a speck of dirt on him. He was extremely meticulous about his uh, personal hygiene. Um, he was voted the neatest in our class, and I don't think anybody that voted voted for anybody else. Dan was neat as a pen every minute. He said he couldn't stand every day somebody crying on his suit, getting mascara on his shoulder, uh, getting makeup on his lapel, uh, rouge and whatever on his lapel and tears running down his suit. Um, that drove him crazy. The, the grief of death, uh, couldn't, he couldn't stand his appearance being uh, deg degraded like that. So he gave up undertaking and became a truck driver. Um, I was driving a truck at that time, had my own truck. And Dan and I trucked up and down the east coast of the United States uh, for some time together. Um, later, he worked for me when I, uh, had, a, when I was, had a company that uh, had a truck, and he drove that truck for me as well. Um, in uh, the Garden of Eden, there was only light. Genesis 1.11 says, uh, then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants, and trees in the land and, and seeds in it according to the various kinds. And it was so. This is God's provision for life. If every time we eat a watermelon, we can see how God has planned for life. Seeds to the left, seeds to the right, seeds everywhere in the watermelon is God's provision uh, for life. Um, I ran over a cat one time, um, had a young family at that point. The oldest son was about three and the younger was a baby. Um, cat darted out in front of me. I couldn't avoid it and I ran over it. Uh, I stopped and reluctantly took that cat off of the road and pulled it up on, a, uh, on the grass. Uh, and as I stood there looking at it, grieving over the fact that I had just killed one of God's creatures, uh, a Ohio State trooper pulled up behind me. And he obviously saw the grief that I had. Maybe there was tears in my eyes, I don't remember. Um, and he said, where are you going all dressed up? And I said, we're going to church. And he said, go ahead and go to church and say a prayer for me as well. And I'll take care of this cat. I was relieved that I didn't have to deal with the dead. 
You see, we are designed for heaven and we won't function fully until we get there. Number two, we are designed for love and we dread loneliness. Genesis 2, 18 says, the Lord said, it is not good for man to live alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. God didn't allow loneliness in the Garden of Eden. Um, you don't have to be married to be lonely. Unfortunately, there are as many unhappy married people as there are unhappy single people. But God, the creator, uh, created animals at, at creation to be with each other. Um, the only one that didn't have a helpmate was Adam. Um, a little girl was told that Eve was an afterthought. And she thought about it for a moment and said, no, God made man first. And after he saw how he reacted, he said, I can do better than that. So he made Eve. Um, only the apparent separation of time between the creation of Adam and, and Eve. Um, the Bible says that Adam, that God sent Adam out to play with the animals. He had to name the animals and he probably saw Mr. and Mrs. Lion and Mr. and Mrs. Goose and Mr. and Mr. Fox and Mr. and Mrs. Cardinal. And he realized something was missing in his life. Only then did God make Eve. Men today are uh, like that. They need time to understand that they are made for love, that love is better than freedom or independence or power. And the women uh, today need to be as patient as God. Let the men go out and play with their Mustangs or their Broncos, either four, wheel, four legs or made by Ford possibly, or other horses under the hood. And eventually like Adam, they'll realize that love is better than all of this. Um, you see, we're designed for heaven and we'll only function fully when we get there. Number three, we are designed uh, to master nature and its unwillingness to be mastered frustrates us. Genesis 1, 26 says, then God said, let us make man in our own image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over the livestock. Genesis 2, 28 says, rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Why do humans have the instinct to hunt and fish? Perhaps it's because of this inability to master them. And the only way to master them is with a gun or a fishing rod. Uh, we're designed to rule over nature. And since we can't, we're frustrated. Uh, we're designed for heaven and will only fu function fully when we get there. Number four, we're designed to enjoy the sensual. It, uh, sin has made sensuality an end in itself. Genesis 2, 2 says, the Lord made all kinds of trees to grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food, pleasing to the eye, the sense of sight. Why do you think God made beautiful flowers and beautiful sunsets pleasing to the eye? Good for food, the sense of taste. Uh, why did God make taste buds? Um, so that we could enjoy uh, our food. He could have made us in such a way that we would pull up to a filling station possibly once a week and say, fill her up and we'd be good for another week. I remember uh, I was on a bowling uh, league uh, years ago and there was a guy with a huge belly that would take his belly and set it up on the uh, counter of the uh, snack bar there at the uh, bowling alley 
and say, fill her up. Uh, obviously he was looking for a hamburger and french fries, uh, but um, it, it tickled me that he would uh, say, fill her up like that. Um, many of you may have prayed uh, recently for Carol's brother-in-law. Uh, he had a uh, cancer of the esophagus that eventually closed off his esophagus so he couldn't eat, uh, nothing would go down. So they had to put in a uh, gastrostomy, a feeding tube in, that goes directly into the stomach. Um, he had had that for a couple of months when we went to visit him in the hospital one day. And Carol asked him, uh, are you hungry? And he said, no, I'm not a bit hungry, but what I miss is the taste of food. If I could just have something in my food, in my mouth, just for a minute, just to taste the food. Um, I can imagine Adam uh, standing under one of those perfectly made trees with beautiful symmetry um, all around him, looking up at the sky, possibly at the sunset. Remember, that's when God came to talk with him. Uh, in the cool of the day. And I can think maybe he was looking at a beautiful sunset, looking at the trees, and then looking at God and say, God, did I ever thank you for the ability to see, to see the beauty that you have created throughout the world? Then he smelled the flowers that were in the meadow in front of him. And he said, God, the sense of smell is so great. Thank you for that gift that you have given to me. And while he was smelling the flowers, he heard the songbirds, possibly a robin or a magpie or a blue jay or a cardinal, and said, God, that music is just so wonderful. Thank you for the gift of hearing. And as he hadn't had anything to eat that day, he picked a piece of fruit and started to eat it. And he said, God, I thank you for the gift of taste. This tastes so wonderful. And he was so uh, enthralled with all of his gifts that he reached over and he hugged his wife and she felt good. And he said, thank you, God, for the sense of feel, the, for the sense of feeling that you have given us. You see, the devil didn't create our senses. God created our senses and in heaven, uh, is heaven is meant to be a sensual place. We are designed for heaven and we won't function fully till we get there. Number five, we are designed for variety. Sameness bores us. How many of us are bored over the last three or four months when we had the same thing day after day? Oh, the house is big enough to walk around in. We can walk around in our yard. We can do different things. We have our mates to uh, be with and to talk with, we're lacking for nothing, but nothing changed. We get bored. At least I did. I don't know if you did. Um, Revelation uh, 22, 2 says, on each side of the river stands a tree of life bearing 12 uh, crops of fruit. Why 12 varieties of fruit on one tree? We only have one. Peaches don't grow on uh, uh, cherry trees and apples don't grow on orange trees. Uh, perhaps it's to illustrate that there will be 12 times as much variety in heaven as there is here on earth. Uh, we get restless uh, when there's not enough variety. Uh, when I first met Carol, she had a golden retriever that um, was a water dog. Uh, now he loved his master's world. He loved to play with his with her three girls. Uh, as long as they were playing with him, he was happy. But when they quit playing and started playing with other children or with themselves, uh, Max would be missing. They'd go look for him, look around, look in the pool, and he would be sitting in the spa with water up to his neck looking around as if to say, come on in, the water's fine. You see, he loved both worlds. He wanted variety. Carol's girls also 
got bored easily. They would tell us multiple times a day, I'm so bored. Um, school boredom, uh, work bored them. It was because it was the same thing day after day. Um, what we really want is the endless variety that God offers. Heaven isn't here. Um, in a sense, all of life is a quest for some kind of heaven. Uh, when I was young, um, I thought heaven would be a new convertible with 406 cubic inches and a four speed, put it on the drag shop and, and drag strip and winning trophies. I had many trophies, but pretty soon the expense of drag racing uh, became too much and that heaven of an automobile uh, started to wear out and was no longer heaven. Then I thought a new boat would be heaven to me. I've had many boats over my lifetime. Um, I have one now that I'm putting in the shop Monday and expect to spend several thousand dollars to get it seaworthy again. That heavenly lure of the boat has lost its appeal. People think that having a child, having a baby will be heaven all of a sudden. But all too often, children have left home without hardly a backlog, left the Lord that you have taught them about, and you spend the rest of your life praying that they will come back to God and, and um, be saved in heaven. Um, you see, we won't, uh, we're designed for heaven and we won't fully function till we get there. In summary, we're designed for life. We hate death. We're designed for love. We hate loneliness. We're designed to master nature and its uh, unwillingness to be mastered frustrates us. We're designed to enjoy variety. Sameness bores us. We are designed for heaven and will never fully function until we get there. Scripture's uh, last invitation is in Revelation 22, 17. And it says, whosoever will may come. You are the only one that will keep you from heaven. Uh, mistakes won't. Jesus can forgive. Weakness won't. Jesus will give you strength. I started operating uh, bulldozers when I was 13 years old. And as I grew, the size of my bulldozers grew until uh, I was operating uh, some of the biggest bulldozers made at the time. There have been bigger ones made since, but uh, the last one I operated uh, weighed 40,000 pounds. So you, it was no small dozer. Um, I was pushing dirt into the lake one day and all was fine. I'd been doing it for uh, several hours and all of a sudden I went to back up and the dozer just dropped. Um, it dropped so far that the, the fan on that dozer was about four and a half feet high and the fan was picking up water and mud and throwing it all over the dozer. There were dozers um, close to me, about two miles away, operating, and I went over and asked them if they could possibly come over and pull me out of the mud and the mire. Uh, they said, no, we can't, but uh, you can drive it out. Well, how do I do that? Um, they said, go down to the railroad, get some railroad ties and tie it to the tracks and build yourself a platform. Then give it all she's got and back it out. Well, it took four days, long days, 16 hour days. And I finally gave it all she's got and backed it out. Give Christ your will, give him your time, give him your talent, give him everything you've got. And before you know it, you'll be out of the mud and mire of sin that you're entrapped in. You see, we are designed for heaven and we will 
not function fully until we get there. How beautiful heaven will be. Sweet home of the happy and free. Fair haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven will be. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to have you in our lives. We want to be in heaven. We're ready. This world of sin has weighed us down. Help us be ready to meet you in heaven, to join uh, with our friends and our neighbors and have the variety that we are designed to have. We pray these favors in your name. Amen. All right. So thank you, Tom. We have a few uh, more people who joined us uh, during this uh, the program. Uh, Donna Harris said, happy Sabbath. Enid Ford during the uh, music said, beautiful. And uh, um, Margaret Mount says, good morning and happy Sabbath. Marty Seeley said, crying from your song, Tom. What a day that will be when my savior I will see. Judy Smith wish, says, wishing you a happy Sabbath. Thank you for the service today. Linda York says, happy Sabbath. Lizette Celestrin says, happy Sabbath. And Martin Anderson said, happy Sabbath. Uh, Nancy Bedencourt says, happy Sabbath, my church family. Thanking God that today I woke up feeling better. Thank you for all, you all for prayers. Was, I believe Nancy Bettencourt was the one we were praying for because she had the coronavirus. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And Gina Royal says, happy Sabbath to all. Um, and that's, uh, I think that's everybody. Um, this, for those who are watching later, this is uh, July 4, 2020 our live Sabbath worship service for uh, Lakeland and Platte City churches. If you had joined us live, I wish you a happy Sabbath. And uh, we'll be here again next week. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some of you in person. So stay safe and God bless you until we meet again.